Working with babies involves being prepared for the unexpected, uh, expecting to be surprised, and with those surprises, getting major hints about why we think about things in the ways that we do. In the early days of my research, my assumption was whatever is special about us is going to reveal itself most clearly in a young human infant because here we have human nature not yet contaminated by all the social influences and education and so forth that's going to come uh, to affect us. And that's where we should see the essential differences between us and other animals. And I think pretty much across the board, wherever I've applied that assumption, I've learned it's wrong. And I've been surprised again and again to see that on the one hand, infants do have extremely important and useful cognitive capacities that we build on in all of our later learning. But when we compare the capacities of infants to the capacities of other animals, we see striking similarities across them. If the capacities we find in infants and animals are the seeds of our uniquely human abilities, then we can use studies of human cognitive development to ask where that uniqueness comes in and what it amounts to. And that's been a very exciting, unanticipated uh, direction for my research. I think we may be the only creature on Earth that can entertain truly abstract concepts, concepts that pick out entities that are very real to us, but that could never, in principle, be seen uh, or acted on, things like a dimensionless point in Euclidean geometry or the infinite sequence of natural numbers. These are things that come to be known by young children uh, and that I don't think are ever known by any other animal. I think those abilities are unique to us and I think they come from this unique propensity that we have to take everything that we know in these separate domains like number and space and objects and people and productively combine that knowledge together to create new knowledge. For the first four years of my life, uh, my father spent most of his time making documentary films all over the world. And my mother, being a good uh, housewife of the early 1950s, uh, put her music career on hold. Uh, but unlike most of the other housewives in the 1950s, picked herself up, picked me up, and with my father, we traveled all over the world. I think I can remember when I met my first group of children. It was at age four and a half, uh, on a boat coming home from the last of these uh, trips. And when I started studying, questions like what's the same across cultures and what's different. I never made a connection to this early experience, uh, but at one point after my mother died, uh, I was given a set of photo books that were taken by the cinematographer who worked for, uh, on all of my father's films, and they were photo essays of me in each picture in a different country with a different set of adults around me in different clothes, on different furniture, with different natural environment in the background, uh, and one place after another. And I, it occurred to me for the first time, hmm, I wonder if this could be why I'm so interested in cultural variation and, uh, and also why I'm so interested in early childhood, these creatures I never met until I was four or five years old. One thing that my children tell me was different about their childhood than about the childhoods of their various friends and at the time and, and later is that science pervaded our lives. We almost never had a dinner without doing taste tests uh, so that we could see systematically is the more expensive ice cream actually taste better? Does the meat taste better cooked this way or that way, seasoned with this or with that and so forth? So we did blind uh, taste tests all the time. Uh, I also involved my kids in my research. Part of this was by necessity. Uh, if the babysitter got sick, I kind of needed to do something with them. But part of it was that I truly believe that the basic methods of science are accessible to everyone and should be common knowledge and part of the common practice of everyone. I felt my mother had made a serious mistake in giving up her music to be a full-time mom. And I also felt that it was a mistake that impacted negatively on me. I felt guilty about this. I felt bad about the fact that uh, she would sit down at the piano and this 
to what sounded to me like absolutely beautiful music would come out, but she would wince because it wasn't at the level it had been at when she was at Juilliard and on track uh, to become a professional concert pianist. Uh, so I was determined never to uh, uh, put that burden on my children. Uh, I wanted them to see that their, mo their mom uh, was having a f tremendous amount of fun both being a mom and being a scientist and that these two were not incompatible with each other. Mm -hmm.